Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks by the New Art School. Our guest today is Tim Weaver. Welcome, Tim. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Hello, hello. Fantastic to have you here. So tell us about you and your work. Oh, well, where to start? So uh, I'm a, a big, burly, bearded, tattooed chap who grew up kind of playing in metal bands and, and touring Europe and kind of found my passion for design through that, you know, kind of creating logos, posters, websites for, for my buddies. And they're all terrible, absolutely terrible. But naturally, you know, it's something I had a passion for. So I went on to, to university and studied this mythical thing called multimedia technology at the time. Uh, I then moved uh, and got myself an internship with an agency and jumped through a few agencies to the point where I'm part-time creative director of an independent school marketing agency, uh, you know, with, with a sole purpose to inspire schools to share their stories. And kind of like Batman, then my evenings is my vigilante work where I work with some like rebellious brand owners and work with them on their branding. So I live a split life, uh, but it's very rewarding and super creative. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So you're, you're actually also involved in recruiting uh, designers then? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So um, I, I think there's a, a wonderful merit to bringing young talent into an agency uh, and I know that because it was firsthand what I did. You know, most uh, my university course when I back in the day, you know, before the wheel was invented, uh, when I went to university, I, it was like maybe two and a half days or so three days tops that you would actually be on campus studying something. And I was like, I want to I, I want to experience what this is going to be like in the real world. And so I actively went out. Uh, I was very lucky that I knew a couple of people who are a little bit older than me who worked in agencies. And I was like, can I come and work for you, please? Can I just, just tread the board, get some experience? Uh, and I was really lucky that I got a, an internship with the agency to kind of complement my university life. So I was doing two days at uni, sorry, two and a half days at uni, two days at the agency, and then I had another half day to work on home projects and things like that. And it, it was mega important because I got such a rounded appreciation for what was going on, you know, in the industry at the time, as well as improving my education on the subject of, of creative and design. And from that, it's always been what I've wanted to do. So at, uh, at my company, I am a creative director of 16, eight of those recruits now have come directly out of university and two of which are now team leads. They're senior designers. They've been with me for six years. Uh, and it all started by me going in and offering the same opportunity that I went out and actually got for myself back at university. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So what are the key things you need to bear in mind that when, when dealing with the, the education sector? Oh, so it, it's really important to know that the, the company I work for, we work predominantly with the independent school sector. So these are the, the fee paying parents. You know, this is it's a lot of money, 30 to 40 grand a term, a bit like university education. It costs a lot, ultimately. Uh, but there, there are a few things that I, I've discovered through my time with working with them that are important to bear in mind. Like the first thing is don't take anything on face value. You know, education is quite possibly the most valuable commodity in the world. And that, and that will never change, really. And it's really common, though, when you start to ask people, what is it about your, your school that makes it so special, that will make people want to give over all this money, that they always go for really high surface level responses. And it feels so cliche and horrible. And they can't really communicate the value that their school offers. And that's where someone like myself and my company, we come in and really drill down beneath that surface level to try and find something that, that resonates um, with an audience. The other thing to bear in mind is the stakeholders. When people think school, they think students. But actually, a, a school community is so broad. You've, you, of course, have the students, but equally, you have the parents who are highly invested in this education because they're putting a lot of money into it. You've got grandparents equally who could be helping to you know, top up or even pay for that on behalf of the students or of, the, of their grandchildren. Teachers, governors, local ambassadors, the list is endless. There are so many people that you have to consider when working within a school environment. 
And I think the third and final thing, and, and it's only through being immersed in the sector for so very long, is you don't lean into stereotypes. I mean, I think it's it's quite common for anyone in a creative position to go, all right, here's a brief, and you go, oh, I've heard a bit about this particular subject or this area, and I'm going to roll with it. But 90% of that time is going to be relying on a stereotype that you picked up, unless you have first-hand experience. And so you know, everyone has these thoughts and preconceived opinions that a particular culture values uh, a certain career path as the most valuable. When I found the complete opposite, what you might think, you know, parents would go, I want my child to be a lawyer or a doctor. They're going, no, the reason we're paying this money is to present them with opportunities. It's not to put them on a career path to be a lawyer, but I want them to experience everything that life has to offer. So the choice that they make at the end of this is going to provide value and they're going to find something that they absolutely love for the rest of their life, uh, which I think is an incredibly powerful and emotive reason to invest in education and far from the stereotype that you might assume with independent school education i mean naturally there are the other benefits that you know you get the, the the boosting confidence that a student can receive within an independent school environment is phenomenal because of that more one-to-one -one style education that you receive the the wealth of opportunities as i said is phenomenal you know, I, I remember working with a school and talking to them about their, their extracurricular opportunities and what they provided. And one child very confidently said to me, we've got a Hobbit chess club. Um, and that, I've never heard of a Hobbit chess club before, but if you want opportunities, that's bold and ambitious ultimately. Mm -hmm. I think you, know, you can't forget that in an independent education, you are buying your way into a community as well. You have a, your own little black book, so when you do leave, you know, coming back to even my own uh, education, where I went and sought out a placement at an agency, students in an independent sector are just that little bit better positioned because they may know someone who can give them a leg up into a certain environment um, because of the people that they're around. And yeah. it's just, it is. But it's, it's a fascinating industry to be part of. What about the same question in, in the higher education context? In higher education, so in, in terms of the university side of things. Yes. Well, I mean, the things that I noticed, because obviously working closely with university students now, is that the education that they're receiving, is it's very one-sided, okay? It's very weighted in one particular area. So if I, you know, invite a student in and they get some experience and I give them a task, they end up generating... 10 to 12 different options that they want me to sit down and critique with them. But in an agency environment, you, no one has time to sit down and review 12 ideas. The, the students seem to, they lack the confidence to make a decision and something which is more visceral and guttural to go, I've tried that, but I'm not going to put that in front of, you know, my senior or the review at this moment. Like I, I need to show them everything. And one of the first things I do with anyone who comes through the door, it's like, it's great that you've got 10 to 12 ideas, but I've got a lot of other team members I need to get around. I want you to just call that down, your favorite three, yeah? Put your favorite three in front of me and let's go from there. And I'm going to help you build on those three. The other ones, it's cool. It's just playtime. You're, you're allowed to do it. But I'm not a maths teacher. I don't need to see you working out, yeah? I want to talk about it. I want to understand it. But this, the depth that they try and do is really interesting. And then there's the whole bit, like the business of design, I think is really lacking when these students come out. Just the understanding of what it means to talk or, or position a piece of work, or indeed just understand the wider process of design. It, it's no longer good just being, you know, creating something that looks beautiful. Like that, that, doesn't, that doesn't deliver on a brand. You know, it doesn't deliver on experience. So you are problem solving. And this is the, the massive difference, which I, I still talk to students about today. It's like design is not art. Art is a motive. It's there to create a picture and it's subjective. And people look at it and go, oh, that's very nice. I like that. I'm going to put it on the wall. Design, you are a problem solver. OK, so make sure you understand the problem before you jump in and try and solve it. Whereas these students will dive in. They'll try and create something beautiful, but it doesn't go back to solving the problem. Mm. And I think that's where the, a broader improvement needs to be made within the education sector there. Right. So do you feel higher education is still the most suitable route for students who want to explore a career in design? 
If I'm brutally honest, I, I don't think it is. I mean, the landscape has dramatically changed for for a newer generation of people who want to become a creative. You know, it was, it was the other week I saw this this hilarious meme, which was like, the only reason I became a designer is I managed to pirate Photoshop back in 2002. And I think there are so many designers of my generation who actually can go, you know, th that there's something in that. Like, I had a passion for it, and I learned. that I was designing for bands long before anyone in university told me how to design. And they didn't tell me how to design. They introduced me to software, but it's still off my own back and my own passion to discover things. And, like, education and, and how people get educated is so very disruptive these days. Anyone can jump on YouTube and learn anything, how to implement a particular style, a look, a feel. You know, it's... You don't need to sit in front of a lecturer for them to tell you this now. What sure. they need is a true passion to get stuck into this. And think there, got... there is there is a problem in that in that YouTube offers everything. Like you know, I, I had a problem with the software uh, mm -hmm. like a few months ago, and I, I saw ten videos, and none of them solved the problem, <laughs> although they were claiming to solve the problem. So it's a selection that's really difficult for that. You know. So what would you propose as an alternative? I, I would say I, I completely get where you're coming from. And I would say like mentorship um, and, and real life agency placements are far, far more valuable from an initial meeting with a client, a, an understanding of the brief, the dissection of the brief, the creation of a proposal. Where where's that gone in any kind of design education? The submission of a contract, what to include in a contract, what not to include in a contract, how to price your work, how to charge for your work, how to create an addendum to a contract. Absolutely. These are all things that every student who goes, I'm going to come out of university and be a freelancer is going to fall flat on their face because they won't have a clue about half of these things. But there needs to be a course that goes, well, that's actually 50% of, of a design business, right? Yeah. And it's still equally fascinating. It's still creative. I actually love that admin kind of stuff because it's just, it's so easy to stand out in an agency environment as well if you're a creative with a great proposal because a lot of them are just, you know, horribly created or a lot of other agencies, not necessarily, you know, the big ones, but those that you might be competing with straight out the back of um, a few years with an agency, they'll be pretty poor. They might not understand it. So having a curriculum created by an agency that gives you a broader and rounder appreciation for delivering on a project and the skills that you have out the other side, 100%. Fantastic. So what is the advice you would like to leave us with? Oh, okay. I think it's, it's twofold. So talking to the educators out there, it's time to step up. It's really, it's to think long and hard about what you are doing for your students and these future designers, right? Are you actually serving them? Are you giving them the very best information that they require of the moment, of the time? Or are you very blinkered? Are you giving this kind of linear focused topic on a piece of information that you have a passion about? Because your passion may not be your student's passion. You need to set them up for this big wide world of design that is changing at an exponential rate. If you're a student, on the other hand, be confident. Look at your options and seize the incredible opportunities that are now out there, the free opportunities that are out there to really become phenomenal and kind of boost that passion, light that fire that will see you through for, for years and years to come. And then when you've really kind of managed to get that passion onto a, a couple of pieces of paper or onto a really simple website, use that confidence that you're going to build, start knocking on doors, sending a few emails and going, guys, Let's get stuck in. Let me come and have a chat with you for 10 minutes because I love design. In a short time, this is what I've learned. I've taught myself and I know I can learn so much more from you guys and I want to bring value to you. I think that's, that's really, really important to have the confidence to go and do that. Well, Tim, thank you so much for this fantastic conversation. Uh, join us at Design Education Forum if you can and uh, we'll be in touch. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much.